Hello, and thank you for listening to my talk about an analytical Diablo model for robotic learning and control. Robots that perform tricks are inspiring, and a great way to showcase technology and push it to its limits. We notice that there is very little work on playing a Diablo with robots, and that it seems to be quite a difficult problem, so we wanted to challenge ourselves and try it out. Unlike juggling, the Diablo task is not easy to decompose into subunits, and it's not easy to describe so it seemed that this would be an interesting machine learning challenge. From the videos at the bottom, you can also see that the skill ceiling is quite high and that there are plenty of difficult tasks to learn in this environment, so we definitely wanted to try learning on these problems. So, the objectives of this research were to a. make a robot play Diablo and b. prepare an environment where the robots could learn how to play Diablo. First, I will explain how we model the Diablo in the string system to simulate the motion of the Diablo. Next, I will explain how we use that model to generate trajectories for the robot playing the Diablo and how we implemented the full system. Last, we evaluate our results with a data set that we recorded from human demonstration. To start with some basics, the Diablo is a juggling toy that is played with a string between two sticks. The Diablo rolls over the string, as seen in the bottom left, and the string friction accelerates it. The Diablo is always in an unstable or metastable state. If the sticks are moved in different directions along the rotation axis, back and forth, like in the middle videos, the Diablo starts to tilt. If the Diablo is tilted, it starts to rotate around the vertical axis, slowly, like on the videos on the right. So to summarize, the string friction is important, the pitch and yaw changes, but only slowly. Now, how did we model this? We make two big simplifying choices. First, we represent the Diablo as a point mass with internal parameters. Second, because simulating the string and Diablo is complicated, we represent the string as an ellipsoid, which is just an ellipse in 3D. When the string is taut, this ellipsoid describes all of the points which the Diablo can reach, because the distance to the sticks adds up to just the string length. The ellipsoid is only defined by the position of the stick tips and the string length, and if you look at the video on the right, you can see how it changes shape as the stick tips move. All the interactions between the string and the Diablo are expressed only in terms of this ellipse and the Diablo center. At each time step of the simulation, we calculate the Diablo state from the previous Diablo state and the current stick tip positions. In this section, we'll walk through the calculation for stationary sticks and for moving sticks, so you can understand our approach a little bit, but we leave the math and the equations for the paper. In each of the cases, there are four simulation steps. In the first one, we apply the regular forward stepping of a dynamic simulation, and in the other three, we apply the constraints of our Diablo string system. We did not calculate any forces, and this is a very simple simulation. The main interest is really to simplify the string as this ellipse. And I will keep calling it an ellipse because it's easy to say, but really all of this works in 3D just as well. So, for the case of stationary sticks, here the Diablo is swinging to the right with a certain velocity. This is the state at the previous time step and we will calculate the current time step. For that, we use the velocity verlet algorithm to estimate where velocity and gravity alone would move the Diablo if there was no string. In the next steps, we apply the effects of the string. First, we constrain the position by moving the Diablo towards the center until it is on the ellipse. That gets us here. Next, we would add velocity from the motion of the sticks, but because the sticks didn't move, we skipped this step. In the fourth step, we constrain the velocity so it does not point outside of the ellipse by projecting it onto the tangent plane of the ellipse. And that's it for this step, we're done. This is how we went from one time step to the next for the stationary sticks. The Diablo moves along the string naturally and it went up the string just as we would expect. Now let's look at what happens when the sticks move. We start from the same Diablo state, but then we move the sticks to pull on the Diablo like this. Let's calculate what happens. We start at the same state as before. We step forward with the Diablo using the velocity and gravity like before, but now the sticks have moved, so the next steps change. To get the new position of the Diablo, we move it towards the new ellipsoid center until it is on the edge. Next, as the sticks moved, they transferred energy to the Diablo, so we add a pull velocity to the Diablo velocity vector. 
Then in the next step, we would limit the velocity as before, but in this example, the velocity vector is already pointing into the ellipse, so we do nothing. And that's the end of the time step, and we're done. Now, if we stop moving the sticks right now, the Diablo would start flying, and it would look like this. And if you look at this, you can see a potential problem, because when we throw the Diablo at the top, we shouldn't constrain its motion, because it might hit the top of the ellipsoid. So to solve this, to solve this, we model the Diablo with three states, on string, loose, and flying. When the Diablo is on the string, the string transmits friction forces. When it is loose, the string does not transmit any force, but the Diablo will fall back on the string, because it's close and the string is still between the two orbitals. When the Diablo is flying, it does not fall back onto the string automatically. The string needs to be taut and near the Diablo, otherwise it falls to the ground. This summarizes the Diablo model. Now, how do we use this model to play Diablo with the robot? We define trajectories for the stick tips using key points and splines, as shown on the right. Then, we calculate the Diablo trajectory that would come out of the stick trajectory, the resulting Diablo trajectory, and check how close the Diablo came to the goal, which you can see in green on the right, and which is manually chosen for each type of motion. Each of these trajectories takes about two seconds to execute, and while it is running, we calculate and optimize the next one, so the cycle never stops. One problem with these stick trajectory splines is that they only impose a position constraint on the tip of the stick, so the IK problem is under constraint. If you run cyclic motions, the configuration of the robot can drift, and the robot can lock up. To avoid this problem, we seed our IK solver not from the current joint state, but from an interpolated state based on the stick tip goal. To obtain those states, we record join states for each corner of these cube volumes, and then we do a linear interpolation inside them. This way the IK arrives at the same solution every time, or almost. To validate the results and get material for learning, we collected about an hour of human demonstrations by using markers and motion capture cameras. This was actually kind of tricky, because to resolve the markers uniquely in the motion capture software, the marker pattern can't be symmetric. But the Diablo spins so fast that the pattern has to be symmetric, because otherwise it would be unbalanced and that would cause vibrations. We ended up 3D printing dummy markers that don't reflect infrared light, so that the weight is symmetric, but the cameras see a unique pattern. We checked how our Diablo model predicts the trajectories in this dataset, and we found that it does a lot better than an EVE neural network, and that the results are physically consistent. You can see on the right that the results from the neural network are not consistent. If we let our model run for longer time frames, then the estimate ends up diverging from the truth. But in practice this is not a problem, because we only need to predict the next few seconds at a time. When we put everything together, it looks like this. On the right hand side you see the physical simulation, and on the left side you see what's going on inside the system. The green diabolos are the gold states. The red ball is the ellipsoid, and the blue diabolo is the actual diabolo that the robots are playing with. The yellow lines on the bottom are the predicted path of the Diablo, and the ones on the top are the stick trajectories. You can see those changing with each cycle of the trajectory, because they are recalculated. The system can keep this cycle going pretty much indefinitely in simulation. We also set this up on two real robot arms using Ross and MoveIt, and tested acceleration and slowing motions. The system worked, but there were some problems. For one, we did not compensate for pitch and yaw so we could not keep going indefinitely like in simulation. Second, we saw that the Diablo can fall out of phase, so to speak, during this circular acceleration, the middle of the bottom video. This would be solved by adjusting the speed of the trajectories, and not only the positions, and this is part of future work. Finally, quick motions like throwing required sudden stops, which would often result in protective stops with the UR robots that we used. To summarize, we presented a physical Diablo model that simplifies the interaction between Diablo and string. We also showed how this model can be used to generate robot motions to play Diablo, and we recorded the dataset to validate our results and seed machine learning approaches. In the future, we want to share an OpenAI gym environment with this model so that the problem can be tackled by the whole community. We also want to expand the Diablo model to include the changes in pitch and yaw, and what happens when the string wraps around the axle, which is required for advanced tricks. Thank you for listening.